Hey everybody, it's Jeff. And by the way, make sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Love to see you also become a subscriber at my website as well. Now, it, it's going to happen. You know, if you're in the markets long enough, you buy a stock, you ride it higher and higher, and then, you know, pulls a, a Wiley E. Coyote, you know, jumping off the cliff sort of thing where you didn't expect that to happen. Uh, and such is the life. If you're someone like me who's invested in uh, growth stocks, a stock like Moderna, for instance, which is down about 35% in recent days. Now, mea culpa here. I'm also the guy who did a video saying that he thought there was an imminent breakout ahead, uh, which turned out, of course, in retrospect, to have been the perfect time to sell the stock at its highs. And of course, it already made a couple of tries at those highs before. Someone said in the comments column of that video that it didn't age well. And, uh, and they're exactly right. It's the understatement of, of the month. Now, the reason for the stock's decline, of course, is being blamed on uh, Merck's announcement of a new COVID-19 antiviral pill, uh, which uh, you know, is apparently proving effective uh, against uh, you know, keeping people from having to spend more time in the hospital to recover and, of course, cutting down on deaths. And all that is just fantastic news if it gets uh, FDA authorization, I, I presume, either on an emergency basis or with uh, uh, a more uh, clinical test. But at the end of the day, really, you know, we, we can say there's an excuse, usually there's a reason for a stock that the news headlines will say why the stock went down. But often it's because the stock itself is really just uh, what we would call a crowded trade. Too many people, too many bulls involved in it. People like me who, uh, you know, were expecting higher highs. And then when something comes along that really crashes that uh, bullish narrative, then, you know, the stock goes down. But the only way to really avoid these kinds of situations is, is one, to have a highly polished crystal ball, which, you know, all of us lack. Or you can sell as soon as you have a small profit. But of course, then you're depriving yourself of getting the larger, you know, 100%, 200% type profits that really make a difference to, you know, our, our financial goals. You know, that's what we need in order to really make our money work for us. You can't really do it making 10 and 15% and selling because you're going to have losses of at least that much, if not more. And the result is just a, a slow slide downhill because you're not staying in the market, not staying in a stock long enough to get the bigger, uh, much larger gains. Owning growth stocks at the end of the day, it's sort of like you know going to the dentist. You know, we know that, that it has uh, uh, really great implications for our long-term health, but it also means that uh, in the short term, we're going to have to undergo some periods of pain. And, and, you know, that's really just what it comes down to at the end of the day. So with all that in mind, I continue to believe that a $600 stock price uh, target is within reach for Moderna within the next, say, 12 to 18 months. But uh, where Moderna goes in the short term is, of course, anybody's guess. A lot depends, I think, on the overall market. If the market, uh, if we see some sort of rally, in coming days, I think Moderna could get back up to you know 400 or so. If the market continues to you know steadily weaken, I think that basically the Moderna stock could fall to as low as 250. And the reason why I say 250 is because uh, if you look on the chart here, uh, there's a gap in Moderna's chart. And there's an old trader saying that says gaps were made to be filled. Uh, gaps can be created uh, when a stock either leaps higher or when it sort of falls into the abyss. Uh, when these sorts of things happen, uh, a chart gap is created and sort of it represents a point where the crowd suddenly gets uh, from, say, enthusiastic to really enthusiastic or from sort of meh to suddenly I got to get out of the stock, right? So you get chart gaps that get created on the upside and they can be created as the stock falls as well. So as you can see with Moderna, it had a chart gap created around 250 back months ago as everybody got really bullish on the stock. And the key thing, the way to think about these deals is that as that earlier enthusiasm wanes, uh, if there's enough pessimism in the air, 
that a stock will sometimes just keep dropping until it sort of fills that gap as the last of these sort of overly enthusiastic buyers, you know, from months earlier, finally throw in the towel. Now, that's not a prediction. You can find plenty of charts of, of many stocks where there's a gap somewhere from months or even years earlier. That's never going to get filled. But uh, if everything else is equal, if you're looking for a, a line in the sand where a stock might fall in the face, especially of a weaker market uh, for Moderna, I would be watching that $250 level, which I think would also be a very bargain price level because based on Moderna's earnings over the next couple of years, around $30 a share at least, uh, you know, if you're looking at 250, that's around eight times earnings. That's still cheap, very cheap for a stock like Moderna with so much else uh, ahead of it here. Uh, last week, I filed a video where I said that in the face of persistent market weakness, one thing that investors and traders do, the thing that I need to do and I remind myself constantly of is what I call the prime directive, meaning that I'm going to watch that the losses in my portfolio don't get out of hand. It's one thing to have a nice gain in a stock and see that you know, fall by, say, 30%. But I still have a nice gain. I've still made uh, something out of my money. I've still compounded my money. Uh, at the same time, if I have new stocks and I see those starting to drift off, those are the ones that I want to cut early to make sure that uh, those small losses don't become big losses. And if it feels suddenly like everything you're doing is wrong, you know, I, I don't want to say don't worry about it, but it, you just have to recognize that this is part and parcel of weakening markets, markets that are either in correction mode or, you know, in a worst case scenario, in a bear market mode. And, you know, stocks will fall and fall and fall, then you have a big rally, then they fall and fall further. Uh, we never know the future on these sorts of things, but this is why I say and have said, like a, a video I did a, a number of weeks ago, I said, this is a good time to be raising cash in your portfolio. And I still believe that, and especially with a situation like Moderna, where it may fall further. We don't know. Uh, my overall idea on all this is that uh, the thing I keep in mind, if I lose 10% of my portfolio's value, it takes about 11% gain to get back to break even. I can do that. If it falls, uh, my portfolio's value loses uh, 25%, it takes about a 33% gain to get back to break even. Again, I can do that. And, you know, of course, a lot depends on which stocks you own and how you're doing your trades. But the point is that uh, in a weakening market, in a situation where suddenly the idea of taking risk uh, and the, the old ways of trading and investing uh, suddenly are not working, the key thing to do is to sort of pull back, raise cash, and you know, wait for uh, better times where the market's upward momentum has returned. We don't know exactly when that is, but again, that's where I say the prime directive is really about survival of our portfolios. And the way we do that is to make sure that we don't let our losses get out of hand. I'm Jeff Yastine, wishing you the best of goodbyes.